Well, good to see everyone this morning. Um, we're going to talk about some things that I think are very important, and I'm excited about this quarter that we're going to spend studying about communicating with God, and maybe some things that we've not thought about, at least in a while, um, about how we hear from God and how we talk with God, um, and some of the mistakes that we might make in that, but also some of the ways that we perhaps haven't been paying attention to the way that God communicates with us. So we will we'll have an introduction to that this morning. Uh, I'll have more to say about that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and invite God to be with us this morning in that and say a prayer to him. We praise you, Father, for this good morning. Uh, what a joy it is to be together and to be able to come before you in your presence through prayer and through worship. Father, we know that you love us dearly, and you've expressed that love in countless ways. Uh, one of the ways that you've, you've shown us that is by asking us to be a part of your family, to call us out from the world into your body, uh, the, the body of your son, the church. Um, you've given us instructions, Father, about gathering to remember you, to remember our Savior, to spend time in your word. Uh, all of these things, Father, are things that help us and change us. They don't change anything about you. You'll be holy and good whether we say anything about it or not. But it is a time, Father, that you've provided for us to be encouraged and built up and strengthened and comforted. Whatever it is that someone might be seeking today by being here, uh, I pray that that your, uh, the things we do together and the things that you've designed will have their effect in their life, that you will help each of us as individuals grow closer to you and grow closer to one another. Father, we ask you to be with us now as we embark on this study for this quarter about communication with you. We pray that you will help us to have ears that hear, uh, eyes that see, hearts that listen, uh, but also, Father, that we will be people that will learn how to talk with you, how to express our concerns, our love, our praise, our fears, uh, but that we will grow in our relationship with you in our studies through these subjects this, this quarter. We praise you, Father, and we ask you to be with us all day and make it a good day for us. Please accept our praise and all that we give you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you'll take just a minute in your booklet and look at the schedule, the first page inside your booklet, um, this should leave, uh, the goal is to make sure that we cover each of these sections each week, so please try to prepare for that. Um, it's usually just a couple of pages a week and a few scriptures to think about and meditate on, but the more that you'll take time with that each week, the better our discussions, I think, will be. Um, and it would be a tragedy if communication wasn't good in a study about communicating with God. So I'll encourage you to do that. Uh, I want you to notice just the structure of the booklet. Uh, we're going to do kind of an intro to it today. Next week, uh, there will be some study on what's really at stake here. Why is it important that we learn to hear God correctly and communicate with God? Why, what does scripture have to say about um, you know, what's at stake for all of that. And then you'll notice like the first few of the classes are going to be about hearing from God, but in a few different ways. We hear from him through studying his word, through meditation, through pursuing wisdom, through each other, um, and through discipline, and we'll explore those ideas together. And then the last half of the class, uh, in no, at the end of November and December, we'll be taking some time to speak with God or learning to speak to God. What's the purpose of prayer? Uh, what does the practice of prayer look like? What are some examples of people who knew how to communicate with God? And we'll talk about that. So I think there's a lot of exciting things we will discuss. And I'll tell you, I think we're just scratching the surface of this topic this, this quarter. Um, but I know it's an area that I need to improve in for sure. So I'm excited to think about these things together with you. So, all right. Uh, any questions about the book or the, the subject matter as we start out here? All right. 
Let's go to page one in your booklet, uh, the introduction and overview, and we're going to just use these, these questions to drive our discussion today. Hopefully you, got, you had time to give some thought to this, and some of these, some of these questions are going to drive us to Scripture, and we're going to look at some things together in God's Word today. Uh, but did anybody get a chance to come up with a definition for communication? How would you define communication? Okay, the process of providing or transferring information. Okay. Anybody want to include anything in that? Pretty simple, Rob. Okay. There's an element to communication if you're talking about relationship that means that it's it's something that goes forth from you and also something that comes to you. Um, in fact, it's very hard to communicate sometimes only one way without some sort of feedback. Um, and so that's part of what we can talk about as well. Good. Thank you. All right, very good. So we can talk about communication in terms of what it does or what it accomplishes, imparting uh, or exchanging thoughts, opinions, news, information. Uh, you can share feelings. You can share ideas. So that would be like the purpose of communication. But the methods of communication um, would be speech, writing, signs, um, any other ways we communicate? Body language. Are some forms of communication more reliable than others or more clear than others? Um, for sure. Uh, you can have greater, um, greater precision in getting an idea across. Some people are better at writing it down. Some people are better at speaking it. Um, I suppose maybe some people are really good at acting it out. Um, but there are things about certain kinds of communication that can be confusing or misunderstood. We think somebody is saying something by their body language or maybe even a, a sign you think they're giving, uh, but it isn't something that's always clear, and so sometimes more communication is needed. What did you mean by that? What exactly is trying to be expressed? Um, so... All right. Anybody want to add anything to just the the idea, general idea of communication? So passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, and assertive. Good. Yes. Everybody has known people that communicate in those ways, right? There are people who are more passive in their communication, more aggressive. Some people who are passive aggressive, which is aggressive, by the way. Um, and uh, what was the last one? Assertive, okay. That's, that's still aggressive. It's just somebody being nicer about it, I guess. Um, okay, good. Anything to add to that? We can start, to start thinking about this a little um, as we begin to consider communication with God. Some of our limitations with God is that we don't have access to all of those ways with him. And then we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but let's, let's, before we get to that, let's talk about question number two. How would you describe the importance of communication in human relationships? And maybe in this discussion we can also say, is communication in human relationships easy for you? Um, or is it something you found to be difficult? Are there certain kinds of people that you find easier to communicate with or whatever? Um, but let's go ahead and just, I'll just open it up. What's the importance of communication in human relationship? What's that? It's essential. It's essential to what? So, all right, good. 
Good. So when you say it's essential, what you mean is it's essential if we're going to have relationship, right? If there's ever going to be any help that's given or help that's received, if there's ever going to be any understanding between us, then there needs to be at least some sort of form of communication. Okay. All right, very good. There, there's, there's a cross, or I don't know if it's a cross. There's a, there are avenues of study or research where people will talk about what communication can accomplish for human beings or what might happen with lack of communication. And it does have an effect upon like emotional, psychological, uh, mental health, physiological health, there are studies that have been done about people that don't have, um, you know, not just communication in verbal ways, but in, in um, tangible ways of touch and other kinds of things. So uh, in that sense, it's, it's very important for the health of humanity. Um, okay, what are some other ways to say that or to talk about that? Like what makes it essential? All right, very good. As we, as we grow in our maturity over the years, I think this would be one way, if you really are thoughtful about it, that, we've changed, that you've changed a lot. Depending on the people that you've known and the way they express themselves, you've found better ways to express yourselves. There's also influences that can be pretty negative in this, can't, isn't there? Um, how, in fact, how does scripture say it? Evil communications corrupt good morals. You ever notice that some translations actually use that language that um, some versions will say companions, but it's interesting if you think about that, companions and communication have a lot to do with each other. Um, and so it can be for our betterment, it can be for making us worse, there can be influences in that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great, great thought. Rob? Okay, uh, Rob's saying we're not people without communication. And then this would have to be clarified a little bit. Um, not all people can communicate the same ways, right? So someone who doesn't have verbal skills, wouldn't, it wouldn't mean that they weren't human. Or somebody who couldn't hear wouldn't mean that they weren't a person. But communication, because it takes on many forms, is really what makes us uh, who we are in our essence. I don't know if you guys have ever thought, I've thought about, everybody's thought about this probably at some point. Um, you always wonder, you know, before children, babies, infants have cognitive ability, like before they, like when I think, I think in terms of words or whatever, how do babies think, you know, without that? And, and part of our growth as human beings, and this might be a little bit what you were talking about, is we learn Ideas, concepts, words, we think in those ways. Um, you know, we broaden our vocabulary and our understanding of ideas with the words that we learn. Uh, and then we can begin to think in different ways, right? 
Um, so there's a lot of really interesting things to think about with this. Uh, Rick? Even though the focus is obviously on interpersonal communication, <clears throat> communication also helps organize, sustain, and control our lives, whether it is traffic life or a work schedule or menus at a restaurant or mom and dad, hey, supper's ready. Without communication, whether it's verbal or from signs or whatever, they, they help organize all right, very good. It, which comes down to like going back to what's the importance of communication. There's without communication, there is a breakdown in society. There's a breakdown in safety. There's a breakdown in. Uh, there's all kinds of dangerous things that can happen if things aren't communicated. So, like you're saying, um, not only learning to communicate the dangers of any given situation or the appropriateness of a situation. But then understanding that, if somebody comes here and doesn't understand the signs that we put up on the roads, um, then there's chaos, there's harm that comes. So part of not just the health of us as individuals, but as a society, depends on clear communication. Good. Christy. Do we do a lot of communicating also when we don't know that we are, um, without intentionally having a conversation or trying to give someone instruction, just by our behaviors? Because right. we leave an influence everywhere we go, so that's still like unintentional communicating. And I think you need to be aware of that. Yeah, this can start. This, if you think about this for very long, it can sort of start to freak you out a little bit, right? Um, in fact, I'm I'm currently listening to a book that's called Talking to Strangers uh, by Gladwell. And he's trying to analyze a lot of like the difficult things that have gone on in society over the last number of years because we don't really understand where each other's coming from and we assume things. Um, and this is part of the, the difficulty of this. And part of what we're going to explore when we talk about uh, communicating with God is a lot of times we think we know what somebody's trying to communicate by their, lang their body language or their lack of communication. How many times have you heard somebody walk away and say, like, oh, that person's this, 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 and this because, and you say, well, what did they say to you? Uh, well, nothing, but did you see the look on their face, or did you see? And there could be a million reasons why that was, and it might not have anything to do with you. could be something completely, you know, that we're unaware of. But we make a lot of assumptions about how people are communicating. Um, but then there's also a maturity that, as Christy's pointing out, we learn that we are sometimes saying things to the people around us, so we need to be thoughtful about where we are and how they're looking at us, that they don't understand a million things that I've been going through, so I have to communicate clearly in this context. Um, I don't know if you ever had that happen. Somebody's being sour, somebody's whatever they're doing, and it starts to bother you and you wonder, and finally, it, it occurs to them what's happening, and they say, wait, this has nothing to do with you. You ever had that happen? And all of a sudden, everything's fine now because you're not misreading the situation. So good, good thoughts. Yeah. Very good. And, and I think that's one of the great lessons that we've all learned in human communication, right? Is that we've all made all kinds of mistakes. We've been misunderstood. We've misunderstood people. It's created difficulties in relationship. But when it's done right, the, Im the importance of good communication, uh, it can develop understanding. It can develop intimacy. It can develop genuine appreciation for others. It can, it, can, uh, it can inspire cooperation. Humans can work together with good communication. Uh, and as Rick pointed out, stability, society, uh, just all kinds of great things that when communication is done right, uh, it's a tremendous blessing in our life. Uh, yeah. You mentioned it, but it's, it's a learn. It's something we learn to do, so something we can improve on. Something that spectrum sort of we can improve on where we're at and improve how to communicate with others and with God. 
All right, very good. And this is the great way about God's made us, right? God made us in his image and part of us being in his image. I'm not going to get into things about do animals communicate and things like that. Certainly they do. Uh, like other beings that God created can communicate. Um, and we can sometimes even learn to understand a little bit about their communication. Um, and they can understand some things about that. But there's a much deeper way that human beings learn to communicate because of that. But it is something that we can improve on uh, in our human relationships and with God. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't really want to put anybody on the spot, but um, I'm curious. How many of you feel like, or at times it felt like in your life, that you aren't a very good communicator sometimes? Like, that you, you feel like, I'm not a very good communicator. Rhett, you raised your hand. Yeah. And, and that might be the kind of thing that you would say, well, it depends on the situation, right? Like, I, I would die if I had to get up in front of a group of people and try to communicate an idea to them. Uh, because of the factors involved in that. Uh, I do really well with babies, like the babies and me get along pretty well. Um, you know, they don't really talk back. Um, but you might, you know, this goes to David's point. We all know that there are ways that we can learn and improve in this. So that's the spirit of this. Um, probably great to have some Bible classes on human communication as well, but this one's going to be about communicating with God. All right, any last thoughts about that question? Jay? Correct. Because a lack of communication can communicate bad feelings or things like that along those lines. Okay, very good. Um, this goes back to interpreting, like Christy was saying, like forms of communication or lack of communication, and we think, what does that mean? Is this going to have a bearing, by the way, on us learning anything from God? What if there's lack of communication from God on some given subject? Do Have human beings treated that silence differently than others. And is that a biblical thing to think about? Yeah. Lots of people have thought, well, if God was silent on this particular thing, then that means I can go ahead and speak for him on that. Other people have thought, well, if God's silent about that, then I probably should respect that uh, and not speak in his place. So as Chase pointing out, uh, that's sometimes a form of communication. And we'll, we'll explore those ideas together in scripture. So, good thoughts. Anything else on that question? All right, question number three. What are some things that make communicating with God difficult? What are some things that make communicating with God difficult? Rick? Okay, that was a lot. Um, one at a time. Let's just start with we can't see him. We can't see him. Um, is anybody else, like, I prefer communication face-to-face. -face. Um, although this book that I'm reading, or, um, Talking to Strangers, has some really interesting things about that, um, about juries that and judges that have made decisions because they think they can tell by looking at the person whether they're guilty or whether they're not, and how computer models that take the facts of things without being able to see their face is far more reliable than uh, people that think they know because they're looking at somebody. But I'm somebody that prefers to talk face to face. Um, but this is not what we get to do with God. Um, we don't get to speak to God face to face. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, here's what Peter wrote around verse 6. He said, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, 
Obtaining is the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So this, this idea that Peter gives us that we've not seen him. Now, had Peter seen Christ? He had. And part of the reason he loved him is because he had seen him. But Peter understood that most everybody else, besides the apostles and first disciples, would never have had this experience with them. Uh, and that makes things difficult. Although, let's go back to this. Did Peter, when he did get to see Jesus face to face, did they ever have any communication problems? Yeah, they did. Was Jesus ever misunderstood by those guys? Absolutely. And that wasn't the fix for everything for them. Um, but as Rick pointed out, yeah, we don't get to see God like this. Okay? Um, what else? All right, good. So one of the things that makes it difficult is this idea of trust or faith. That's true in human communication as well. Um, I don't know if you've ever had people communicate with you and you still struggled because you just didn't believe them. You weren't sure if they were reliable. Uh, you couldn't trust them. Um, and so there's an element of that in this with God. Um, so sometimes it's difficult to communicate with God or to hear God right because we're not trusting enough to hear him. So good, good thoughts. What else? Kyle and then David. I think culture plays a little bit on it too. What'd you say? Culture. Culture. So coming from California versus Minnesota, I mean, there's obviously a difference in the way we communicate. Um, I think the same thing when we read the word is what our experiences have been in life or what we're facing in life kind of guides how we interpret that scripture or what message we're pulling from. All right, very good. Um, yeah, if, if we aren't thinking in terms of when God originally said the things that he said in a certain cultural context, we might not understand it. Um, we also might sometimes decide, well, because God said that in a certain cultural context, he couldn't possibly mean anything for us. And so that's going to be part of our discussion is how do we begin to rightly understand that? But yeah, culture can have uh, an impact on that. David? All right, good. So David's kind of pointing out part of the difficulty is some of the ways God's communicated in giving us principles and teachings meant to guide us, um, we don't always in the moment get to hear God say, this is exactly how I want you to apply this principle in this situation. Have you ever wished that it was just like a dialogue you could have with God? Like, you know, Jesus said that he was going to... Uh, all of us that were weary and heavy laden, we could come to him, find rest. We could take his yoke like he's next to us. But Evan, you ever wish that Jesus could be like, all right, here's the next decision. Uh, here is exactly how you do this. Um, but that's one of the difficulties is it is not a dialogue, right? Um, it takes time. I have to go search sometimes for what it is that God has already said about this. Um, I'm not getting to, in real time, talk back and forth to God, getting to hear every instruction. Um, did anybody have that kind of relationship with God in Scripture? Moses did. Um, in Exodus chapter 33, verses 7 through 11, and especially Numbers 12, 6 through 8, God makes this point where he says, look, Moses has a special relationship with me that Aaron and Miriam, who were complaining in Numbers 12, didn't have. Um, and even the prophets didn't have. Like, prophets were given visions and dreams, but 
God spoke to Moses like a friend would speak to a friend. Um, Now, a lot of us, I think, have lived wishing that maybe that's what we could have with God. But Moses was very unique in that regard. And there's no indication in Scripture that that was going to be God's way with anybody else. In fact, he rebukes the people that were complaining about it and says, like, this is something special for him. Uh, So, uh, good. Yeah, very good. So this is one of the things I wrote down as well, is part of the difficulty with communicating with God is he knows us better than we know ourselves even. Um, I can be self-deceived and even think certain things, and God can know that I'm actually self-deceived. In John chapter 2, verse 25, we're told that Jesus knew what was in man. He didn't need anybody to really tell him what was in him because he already knew. Um, that does make communication difficult, doesn't it? And it's part of what we'll explore when we talk about prayer. Some people think, well, if God already knows everything about me, why talk to him anyway? Um, Like, I don't really need to pray. I don't really need to talk with him because he already knows. And so I can just sort of be like, God, you know, like, do do the thing. Um, But this can be a challenge to a lot of us that begin to think deeply about that and how how do we work that out. Yes. Right, very good. Any are there any encouraging scriptures about that phenomenon where we don't know what to say? Right. Good. Good, Romans 8, 26. Like, we have thoughts and feelings that we don't know how to put into words, but the Spirit of God actually helps communicate that to the Father uh, in groaning study for words that we have. So, like, there's these cool promises about how God's actually going to help us in communication with these kind of frustrations as well. So, good, good thought. All right, anything to add to that about why communicating with God is difficult? All right, quick summary. We can't see him. It's not a dialogue. It takes time. It also takes effort sometimes for us to actually know what God said. Um, The way he communicated was he gave us information and asked us to go search it out and seek for it. Um, He knows us better than we know ourselves and perhaps some other things. All right, um, question number four in your booklet. In what ways does the Bible teach God communicates or has in the past communicated with people? Um, What I'm hoping for in this is just to kind of make a list, because this is some of what we're going to look at together. But did anybody take some time to write down things you know in Scripture about how God communicated with people? Sam? Sam? All right, very good. Um, As Sam pointed out, Hebrews 1 is a really important text. We'll talk about this a number of times through this. But reading it so everybody can hear it. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, has in these last days spoken to us in his son. Notice the Hebrew writer doesn't even list it because there's so so many ways that God did it that he doesn't take the time to enumerate them. He just says in many portions and in many ways. Um, Some of the ones that we might know about are what? Anybody got any? Through the law of Moses, God actually had a written law uh, both on stone and on on, um, 
uh, other books that Moses wrote that they could go reference. Dreams and visions that God would give certain people. Um, all right, what else? Signs and wonders that he would perform. All right. Say again. Good. The Bible actually teaches that God communicates some things about himself through nature, through the created universe and world. What else? Angels. All right. So divine messengers and human messengers, prophets and others that would come and speak to somebody and say, here's what God wants from you. Um, and that person would then have to conclude whether that was from God or not. Say again. Good. Right. God communicates through discipline, through consequence, through trials. Um, in fact, that text we read a minute ago in 1 Peter 1, when Peter says, you, you have not seen him, but you love him. I read the first part of that. Do you remember what he was talking about right before that? going through trials that are a lot like what? Fire that are meant to make us better. Now, most people that go through trials that feel like fire, what did they begin to conclude about God? He either doesn't exist or else he'd help me in this mess. Or, what? If he does exist, why is he allowing me to go through this? If he, if he was good at all, he would help me in this. And of course, Peter's point in all of this is, you can't see him, but this is actually making you better, and it's by God's design. And even though you can't see what he's doing, you need to learn to trust him, love him in return uh, because of this. So... But God does communicate and has communicated through trials and circumstances and difficulties. Okay? Anything else to add to that? Yeah. Okay. Which would be verbal communication through teaching, but sometimes the teaching wasn't straightforward, right? Sometimes it was poetic or in a symbol or in a metaphor or in a parable. And God did that by design. So we'll also talk a little bit about that. Good. So he communicates through people, and I would say it this way. Sometimes God communicates the truthfulness of things by testimony. Like you can watch somebody who has listened to God apply the things of God and it proves the thing that you, you know, that God said to be true. And so people can learn something about what God's will is by seeing it tested or, you know, the testimony of that thing being lived out. Good. All right. Anything to add to that? All right. Next question. What are some ways people think God communicates with them that have little or no biblical basis? Do you think of anything? Urgings. Urgings, feelings, okay? That's actually a really important thing to think about. Um, there are some times that Scripture will say some things about, somebody will make a comment about how God had put something on their heart. But it still doesn't indicate that it was simply a feeling they had or like some sort of urging that they had. Um, but that's actually something that is very popular now. Like, that's one of the most popular ways that people will say God is communicating is, yeah, I feel like this is what God wants me to do. Okay? But even in the history of God's communication, that's not something you see. Um, or even the idea that God's walking around with, like, a little voice in your ear, like, telling you something. Or that somebody even had, like, just a thought and God was communicating with them. Typically, that was reserved for dreams or visions or something like that. It wasn't just God whispering in their ear or giving them some sense of things. Now, we'll have to work out some nuances about that later because the New Testament will teach things about how the Holy Spirit and following Scripture and the teaching of the Spirit trains our senses 
to discern good and evil. And senses are feelings, but they're feelings that have to be trained by the right information. So we'll, we'll talk about some of that. All right, anything to add to that? Yeah. The Pope, okay. All right. So here's, uh, here is something that is going to have to be discussed. God has, at times through history, had spokesmen, hasn't he? Moses was a spokesman. The apostles were spokesmen. And a lot of people live today thinking God still has spokesmen. Does everybody believe that the Pope is the spokesman for God on planet Earth? Not everybody believes it. Do a lot of people believe it? Sure. And it's a valid question to ask, is God speaking through him or not? Because there are also 12 apostles who live in Salt Lake City, Utah, according to many people. And there are also people that are prophets of God speaking in the Watchtower Society. And there are also people that think the prophets of God are standing in pulpits um, occupying places in churches, being apostolic, giving information to people. And so this is going to be part of the question is, does God inspire everyone who claims to be a prophet? Is God still speaking through spokesmen that are living on planet Earth now? And how do we know the difference? Um, good. Yes. Okay, and that's something we're going to study a little bit without just stating it before proving it, is, and maybe I'm going to say it this way. We just listed a lot of things, prayers, angel, or I'm sorry, uh, dreams and visions, angels, all these different ways that God's communicated through the past. Should we expect that God is going to communicate with us like that? Does the New Testament teach, hey, Christian, here are some ways God's going to guide you, and the way he's going to guide you is the way he guided all these people in the past. Expect dreams, expect visions, expect prophets to show up, expect all the things that other people have been communicated. That's part of the question, is are those the ways that God intended to communicate with us throughout history? We've already read Hebrews 1.1, which kind of seems to indicate God chose a different way to communicate in the new covenant that was not going to be the same ways that he communicated throughout history. But I want to say it one more way as we finish this. Even in the times that people lived in the past, did everyone get communicated to, by God through the same means? Like, did everybody have dreams and visions? Did everybody uh, get to have an angel appear to them? It would have been foolish for even the people of that time to think that they should expect God to communicate with them the way he was communicating with Moses. That's part of Moses's or God's rebuke in Numbers 12. So there's a mistake that's made by many people nowadays that they go to Scripture and they say, oh, look, God talked to somebody like this. I suppose and expect that he'll talk to me like that. And that is part of what we're going to explore in this class, is, is that right? All right, thanks, everybody. Good start. We will... Pick up um, next week with lesson number two, which actually answers question number six. What's the importance of this? So thank you. Robbie the Pope. Hey, I think I'm still lit.